Usually we see two different location approaches when creating headshots for a client in the photography studio or on the client's premises. But a few weeks ago, when I was scrolling through Rafael's Instagram account, I explored some posts that really catch my attention. Images shot I would never have believed or guessed way there were done. So today we also talk about the third option, the absolutely unusual locations for your headshots photography. They are truly surprising, at least for me. Welcome, Rafael. Great having you here and thanks for joining me. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me. I, I'm super excited to chat with you. We've been talking for quite a bit over the last several months. So yeah, thank you for the invitation. And I'm yeah, super excited to you know discuss some of this stuff about the way I work with my clients, how I shoot my headshots. Um, yes, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to these conversations for sure. Great. Before we jump in, let me just quickly explain for our viewers that I have created a showcase with four sections. So the two first sections are about really the locations. Mm -hmm. Then one is about posing on location and one is about lighting on location. But before we jump in, you stated in one of your uh, in one of the quotes in one of your posts on Instagram, creativity is inventing, experimenting, growing, taking risks, breaking rules, making mm -hmm. mistakes, and having fun. This is yeah. a quote by Mary Lou Cook, uh, an actress, by the way. But I mean, there's some reason you you picked this quote. Is this a guiding principle of yours? <laughs> um, you know what? Like, there's so much to unpack here because I think it's a kind of process when it comes to, you know, like creating your art. It, it, it's starting like everybody else, you know, we, we start with equipment, then we try to somehow develop the style and we're going through so many different obstacles, challenges, and we try to make things work. And I, I know in this DNA, we try to learn things quickly, but unfortunately I found that it, things takes time and then we have to be patient not only with ourselves but with the process um, itself and there was no difference when it comes to my career um, like I don't know people who are following my work I started as a wedding photographer for about 10 years so I you know try to learn this kind of genre of photography and then I started slowly um, kind of changing into something different because weddings were really burning me out and I was just like okay you know I have to stop this at some point I still want to stay in photography and I still want to stay in that industry and I started slowly shooting headshots because I fall in love with them I, I found that this completely different connection with the client mm -hmm. uh, there's a different way of shooting and at the beginning I was thinking hey I have 10 years of experience you know, hats just going to be easy breezy till I started actually shooting them. And I was just kind of overwhelmed, like how much more I have to learn, how much I have to understand about lighting, about uh, posing, about, you know, off camera, you know, lighting, because weddings, most of the time I was shooting pretty much um, natural light and going from natural light to, you know, speed lights and then all this lighting setups was extremely confusing. And, and I think what is the biggest problem sometimes is, you know, we have access to so much knowledge these days and we can kind of get it for free. It's, it's We don't have to really kind of go to school. We can basically go on YouTube. But at the same time, even though you know the principles, you know, um, you know, how things work, you, 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 you see all the setups, but then this whole process, again, is much more complex. It's not just, you know, putting the lights here and there, take a shot and you're done and there's 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 much more to it and and i right. will be happy to kind of dive really deep into this and we can kind of discuss how this whole thing kind of right so unfolds. but going back to creativity and yes. challenge that's actually that was kind of your step of involvement from your wedding photography towards headshot or to this genre or style obviously um, wedding photography needs the same. So creativity, mm -hmm. is this your guiding principle? So was this really stepping up um, towards you live by that in headshot photography? Yes, I 100% I agree that there, there was like, what I, what I was trying to say is, you know, each genre of photography um, needs different type of creativity because when you shoot weddings, you think differently. When you shoot headshots, you also have to look 
and think differently just to make things work. So I don't think we can compare those two things that this whole thing kind of you can apply from one genre to another. There's definitely some principles when it comes to the lighting and you have to understand how this whole thing works. But again, you you approach weddings differently and you approach headshots completely different way. But again, it's it's always challenge, right? And then and, and, and there's always obstacles. But I, I think that people take a lot of challenges different way. Um, I think we're getting frustrated and we're getting kind of upset. We're getting angry. There's so many negative emotions associated with challenges. Um, but what I've learned over the time, I was always trying to kind of talk to myself and say, hey, you know, there's a solution for this because if someone else was able to, to kind of overcome this, you will be able to do that as well. And that kind of makes you research more and practice more and try new things. And eventually you will get the, the results. It's again, as I said a few minutes ago, it just takes time. And then sometimes we just don't have a patience for that. But it's like everything else. I deeply, I don't really believe in talent. You know, a lot of people saying, oh, you're so talented. Like, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't think this is true. It's, it's just a little bit of talent and so much work. And you have to just kind of keep pushing, keep pushing, keep trying. It's, it's like climbing the mountain, right? It's just a right. slow step, incremental right. steps. And then, then eventually you will get to the, to, the, to the top. So it's work and consistency, right? Absolutely. So let me switch to the quickly to the presentation. So let me start from my side with the most mm -hmm. surprising locations that I was never expecting just seeing mm -hmm. the results. Okay. Let us take this in for a moment. Okay. This could have this could have been done everywhere, right? Yes. So now let's see where this was done. This yeah. is <laughs> <laughs> this is astonishing. Please explain us what you were shooting here and what's actually going on and why the well, why for the good part is this in this kind of outdoor setting? Mm -hmm. Please tell us what's going so, on here. So before I jump into kind of explaining this photo shoot, and that was actually shot on the bridge. Um, this is like right. one of the most famous bridges in Calgary. It's fairly new. Um, this bridge won many awards for the architecture. It's kind okay. of a popular place. So oh, okay, but if we go back to the result here, right? Yeah. I mean, who cares? Yes, but I'll yeah I'll <laughs> explain I'll explain this uh, step Sorry. by step. So before we jump into this whole thing. Um, I just want to say that, you know, I never own a studio. So, you know, for me, basically shooting everywhere was, was the only option. And, and you know, the, I didn't have too much choices because, as I said, like, if you have a studio, then, you know, you can play with, you know, different stuff. You can play with different um, lighting. You can create things, um, you know, kind of specific way. But for me, um, when I kind of turn into headshots, my goal was to pretty much pick locations and, you know, try to shoot, shoot there. Um, so, so that was one of those things um, which, you know, kind of get me kind of my creative juices going because I was always on the lookout for some places where I can, you know, do my headshots. Um, and before we actually also like, jump into the specifics of this image. Um, so this shot was taken for, um, there's campaign, which I ran with my wife several years ago, and we were pretty much photographing people from Calgary who, you know, they have, they achieved some, you know, amazing things in, in, in their careers. And uh, this actually particular gentleman, he's a really well-known musician and he's a singer. He's really popular in Canada. He, he wrote some amazing songs. You can hear him on the radio all the time. So when we shot this, um, we talk a little bit about, you know, where we want to do the shoot. Um, and we want to pick up the place which is going to be associated with our city. So that's why we picked the bridge, because the right. bridge is really popular. It's, it's, it's one of those kind of landmark of, of Calgary. So when people see it, they know exactly where that is. And that was partially the, the 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 reason why we chose this location it was not just you know I could get to shoot everywhere anywhere, it was more to give a little bit of more meaning for for right. him for the image and just connect some stuff which would kind of showcase 
um, who he is, where he lives, where he actually career is unfolds, where he, you know, started. There's 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 a lot of lot of kind of, of stories course. behind, right? But of that's course. why we but choose this person. Exactly. But that's perfect. You know, for me, a really outsider from Europe, looking at mm -hmm. this particular picture, unfortunately, not no, not knowing the gentleman needed the bridge. <laughs> So it's great to hear about the concept. So it seems to be the gentleman is countrywide known, the bridge is known, mm -hmm. it makes the context, and that's just perfect. That's the perfect mm -hmm. explanation. But seeing the post or this kind of situation on mm -hmm. uh, Instagram in your portfolio, I was thinking like, okay, why in a way of doing it here besides of a cool background and we will talk about backgrounds in a mm -hmm. minute. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. So that's the concept. So sure. let's go to the second one. Um, where's the key? Here's the key. So this gentleman, kind mm -hmm. of the same situation. Let us sink this in for a moment. And mm -hmm. that's the that's behind the, the scenes. That's the behind the scenes. Yes. Right. Again. Um, what's the little story, the short story? Okay. About it? So, um, so the story behind this, um, this gentleman, um, yeah, like I wouldn't want to go to the specifics, uh, but sure. he he's a kind of a person who has some rough moment in his life. And he asked me, he says, hey, you know what? I'm kind of in the really rough spot. Um, I'm, I'm trying to do some modeling and some acting and then and, and I need some headshots, um, which could kind of like showcase who, who I am. And um I always look for places, you know, where there's a color, there is some texture, there is some patterns. Um, and we, you know, the funny thing is about this is the fact that Calgary is kind of place where you really can't find graffiti. Like it's, it's just, it's just really difficult because they, they disappear the next day whenever they appear. And the, the local government has, I would say company, or they have some kind of like, um, I don't know, system put in place that if there is any graffiti around the city, they clean up right away. There's a company coming in and they're just going to paint over the whole thing within minutes. So seeing something like this, I was, I was just like amazed because it was kind of cool location. Um, and, 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 and the graffiti itself had this kind of really cool colors and patterns and then stuff like that. So I said, hey, you know what? I look at this place. I found it recently. I hope it's going to be still there. Why don't we go and we're gonna shoot there? And he's like, sure, you know, like I don't, I don't mind. We can, we can go anywhere. So that's why we we choose this um, location. Um, but most of the, the 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 reason I've decided to do that, I really like the colors. I really like the pattern. And when I saw it, I was just like, okay, you know what? I need to shoot there because it's gonna create something interesting. And um, yeah, and then we basically went there, set up my you know typical lighting, and um, we we did the photo shoot. So. I was always jealous for you know some cities where they 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 like literally flood it with um you know graffitis because it's also kind of piece of art right and then you connecting like your art with someone else art I always found this kind of fascinating and um actually the place who we are you know the place which was connected to that wall was a restaurant and they also wanted some photos of this this this, this graffiti because like you know what the guy that well the 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 city of Calgary is gonna clean it up really quickly. So if we could just take a couple shots so we can have it as a kind of memory, it would be nice. So um yeah, so that was the whole kind of concept um behind it. So that's that's such a beautiful insight. That's that's so many things we don't get as as viewers, obviously, because really we're very neutral. We just see the final and then uh, um, apparently the behind the scenes. Yeah. So, but that was really actually a very private headshot client shoot. So that's the whole concept behind that, right? And Absolutely. That's, yeah, but that's yeah, so, beautiful. So the, yes, thank you. Um, you know, there's another like a little reason I've decided to do that because um, I've been hearing from so many photographers, you know, like this is one of those things which you just hear all the time. Oh, I, I don't have a place to shoot. Like, I don't have like nice backgrounds. I don't have some interesting places in our city. I'm like, you just have to look around. You know, you, there's so many places in every city um, and, and you just have to look for them and then, you know, use them. Um, the thing is that you, you definitely, you know, you wouldn't take some, 
I don't know, some CEO or some kind of corporate person to some kind of backyard and, you know, just do this type of shoot. So also you have to, you know, figure it out, you know, what the location is, is good for. And then, you know, who can be good fit for this particular um, place. But that's also like one little thing what I want to add to this is that this whole kind of like way like the way I was look, the way I look for locations came from my wedding kind of experience because we always try to create something different for each client. And then when you shoot in the same location, I was always on the lookout for places because I didn't want to shoot all my clients in the same place. And some of those popular places, you know, when it comes to weddings, they're always packed with people. And um, that's why I was always kind of even driving around a city and going to some, you know, you know, behind some avenues and some, you know, dirt roads and then and, and look for places which could be interesting for my wedding photography. And I, I definitely discussed this with my clients prior, like, oh, I have this location. And usually I have some snapshots, you know, of the place. And, you know, I was always asking like, hey, would you guys be interested to go to that place so we can take some wedding photos? And again, depends on the client, depends, you know, what they were looking for. Um, you know, I could always have some unique places and I knew whenever I'm going to whenever I'm going to go there, there'll be nobody else. And, cool. um, and that's kind of, you know, the same scenario when it comes to the headshots. Um, I was always trying to find some new places where I could take some interesting, um, you know, pictures and have some interesting backgrounds. That's really fantastic. Okay. Let's explore a few unusual shooting situations, which are also connected to rather unusual locations, but the mm -hmm. combination is quite striking. Mm -hmm. um, please. Again, so first we have here this beautiful result, this beautiful lady. Everything is in yellow. Oh, it actually fits kind of the ISO 1200. There you go. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like your shirt. Okay. Thanks for choosing your shirt today. I of course. I've not really noticed that. <laughs> so we have, we have this result, but what is really, really, really freaking striking is the shooting uh, situation. Of course, it's the location, but also the situation. It seems to be a... Um, a public pool, swimming pool, something like that. Mm -hmm. Why? What did you do there? Okay. So again, this is a little bit of story behind it. The, the, of course, behind, <laughs> behind this this image. So this lady, she um, that was shot several years ago, and she actually won uh, Miss Canada. And she approached me and she's like, "Hey, I want to get some images, um, some headshots, you know." would you be okay to, you know, kind of organize a shoot? I'm like, sure, no problem. And um, so as you probably know, I live in Calgary where eight months of the year, we have pretty insane uh, winter and the temperatures drops usually to like minus 30, minus 40 degrees. So like, there's no way I can shoot um, outside. So Usually I'm trying to find locations where it's indoor so I can pretty much, you know, shoot there and then, you know, kind of create uh, those images. And in this particular case, um, I was telling a little bit about this, this, this um, a program or like project I was doing where we were just picking up some, you know, the most known people in Calgary. We're creating portraits and then we pretty much um, creating kind of like a charity campaign around it. And um, that year, I was we were, we had this big event um, at that location. It's a hotel. It's a boutique hotel in in Calgary, and has in, in, insane interior. Like they have some pretty you know amazing stuff in inside. And um, yeah, I just pretty much you know contact the the the, the owner because I I actually had access to the the person who was owning the place. And I ask them straight ahead. I'm like, hey, I have this this lady. She's Miss Canada. And, um, you know, we I was wondering if I could shoot in your hotel. And they, they said, of course, you know, just come in, let us know when, and we will set it up. So we had few locations. So they have beautiful lobby. Um, if I could show you kind of different images because we are trying to do different stuff. And actually, you know, we were shooting at the pool because pool was connected to the lobby. And um, they have all these cool lights behind it. So yeah, I set it up everything on the pool deck, and um, yeah, we 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 shot there. Um, so you know, I think one of those things what I want to share with that is the fact that 
to be honest, I was shooting literally everywhere, you know, like place you just you just put me in the place and I'll make it work. Right. And again, this is what I was saying at the beginning, because I don't have a look. I don't have a studio. I was trying to make any location work. And that Absolutely. was one of them. Yeah. And that's fantastic. That's why we're talking about this today, right? So, uh, and that was my thought. You don't have a studio. That's why, obviously, we, we you choose this kind of locations. I just think you should make your mm, marketing or promotion better. So, I I know Instagram is sometimes a bit limited in these carousel mm -hmm. posts. And I yes. got these photos from the carousel posts, obviously. But the thing is, I didn't know the gentleman from the very first photo um, at least you could sh have shout out. So this is, you know, the very famous singer from Calgary or Canada. So now we are talking about the Miss Canada or mm -hmm. ex Miss Canada. Mm -hmm. Never saw this caption. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just as a hint. <laughs> yes. Oh, absolutely. I was, you know, I shot a lot of, lot of well-known right. people in the city. Um, right. And, and we always work in some really, well, not strange, but, you know, kind of, yeah, yeah, but that's Locations, fantastic. But, but I didn't get that when researching this kind of post or this interview. Mm -hmm. So I really didn't get actually the celeb status mm -hmm. or or whatever. I know that's sometimes not really important, yeah. but um, it helps in a uh, in promotion, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but you know what? Again, this is also I'm not trying, and this is I don't know because I'm I, I would say a little bit humble. And, and I'm not trying to promote myself throughout, oh, because I shot, you know, this and that person and just of kind of like, yeah. And then the, like, I know a lot of photographers out there kind of like push this because I know it just brings them more I don't know, credibility and business and stuff like that. But um, like I, for me, at the end of the day, the most important thing is the image. As long as the client is happy, right? And as long as I'm happy with the images, that's what, what I care about. But just kind of like, putting all those, you know, medals around myself that I shot with that person. Um, I don't really do that, but. Absolutely. And I get that. And I'm kind of similar way. And yeah. it's not that suggestion that you should do that. But what, what is really striking for me is beside the locations is every image or every result we see here, we're talking about now has a story and has a, yes. pardon, has a personal story to it. And this gives a additional dimension most likely is missed um, if we just see the photo. So that's why I was suggesting kind of, you know, the yes. relation oh, to what it was and how it is. I, I know I, I really should do it. that. There's no question <laughs> about it. It's sometimes like I'm just getting this, okay, how people are going to take it, right? And how people are going to look at it. And Don't care about it. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. Beautiful okay. photo. Really striking. Really, ah, a lot of energy. What the heck is going on with the child on this photo? So this also has a quite interesting story. Um, of course. It, it's a long one. I'll, I'll try to... Let's I'll try, try, to, let's try to make it short. Yes. Yes. So this lady, she is a yoga instructor. And um, she helped my wife big time uh, with... When she, when she was pregnant with she was pregnant with my son, she literally throughout nine months guided her through you know all this stuff that helped her to you know kind of get to the finish line the best way possible, and um, you know she directed us to like a you know pregnancy schools. She gave us some amazing tips. She gave us some amazing books. Um, she really really helped us with my wife's pregnancy um, to the last day. She was just like in touch with us and she was helping. And, you know, of course, at some point she's like, you know what? I need a headshot uh, for my business. And I said, sure, you know, I'll come in. And she's got three kids and two of them, I think went to school and she get the little, little, little one, um, you know, throughout a photo shoot. And, and then she's like, are you okay with this? I'm like, of course, you know, we will have to make this work. So the kid, um, as soon as we start shooting, she started crying, right? And I'm just like, you know, she was trying to kind of calm her down and whatever, but she was just going kind of, kind of bonkers. She was not happy that, uh, you know, we were shooting. And at some point she's like, you know what? Like, screw it. Let's do this. I'm going to smile. You know, she can cry. And I just snapped this photo. I was just like, you know, cause she was like, she was just, you know, posing and smiling and trying to kind of make this work. And this baby was just like literally glue it to her leg and, and, you know, losing her, losing her mind. 
um, yeah, so I just kind of, you know, zoom out a little bit um, and I took a shot and, um, you know, it was kind of interesting because whenever I post that image on my Facebook group or, you know, post anywhere, people were absolutely crazy about that image, right? I think it was even more popular than the headshot itself because I think a lot of people can relate to this, right? You know, we go into this photo shoots. You know, people try to make this work and there's so much things going on around. And then most of the times we really don't don't see that. So feeling and seeing and listening to your approach of headshot photography, which has all always a kind of a very personal component to it. It seems to be so different from other photographers that are shooting more corporate industrial style stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I'm certain you're doing this too, and that's not what we want to talk about this today. But you know, it was really about this unusual locations, and now we get these insights and 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 personal stories, which is absolutely fantastic. So, mm -hmm. uh, so if yes, please, if I might, there's one little thing to it, uh, which I'm sure if you see the, the the behind the scene photo, we were shooting in the kitchen, so that's her kitchen. Um, so you can see the table. There is right. a stove behind oh. it. Right, so, I, I didn't know that's her kitchen. I just yeah, that's knew her it, it could be in a bar or in a restaurant. No, no, or that, was, that, right. was her, okay. that was her kitchen, right? Okay. So that was another little kind of funny thing that we're shooting the business headshot for her business, like with her baby and, you know, in the kitchen because the, all the other places, you know, I, I, did, I couldn't make it work. Cool. Okay, let's, let's go to the next, a bit more traditional ones, at least from my perspective. Mm -hmm. For my class classification, these are environmental headshots, right? But surprising mm -hmm. for me, it's kind of we do not really recognize the environment. So, mm -hmm. um, I will reveal the behind the scenes in a second. But why did you shoot there at all? So, that's mm -hmm. the result, and that's actually where it was shot. Of course, the picture number five. So, the lady is a ch chef, I, mm -hmm. I uh, assume. And then the number six, I don't know, could be a barkeeper because we have it in a bar or in a restaurant. But um, it's obviously not exactly about, well, within their environment. So mm -hmm. what's the story or what's the concepts for this kind of shoot? So so there's also like a little story to those, those images. Um, again, we'll try to keep it short. So when it comes to the headshots, like my main focus is the person itself, right? And because you don't really see, it's not a, like a typical, I would say, you know, environmental image where you're just shooting there in the location where, you know, they kind of like, I don't know, this, they're to the business or the career or whatever, the, whatever they do. Um, so when you see the headshot, you really don't kind of, as I said, you cannot really recognize where it was shot. But, you know, people who hire me to do the work, they know, you know, it's not about the environment, it's about them, right? So that's why, um, you know, those images look the way they look. Although I think these people kind of know where it was shot. So that's a little bit of story which is hidden and it's just for them. So the first image, you know, on the top, um, you know, the lady in the kitchen. So she, this is another really interesting story. She's a chef for one of the most wealthiest people in Calgary. And, um, you know, the guy, you know, like, I don't know how much he's worth, but probably like billions and billions of dollars. And he and his, um, he's got a, this building in Calgary where he, well, basically run his, you know, companies. He also has a private or personal chef who basically cooks for him and, 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 and his team. And, um, yeah, she contacted me and she's like, you know what? I need a headshot. And then, you know, would you be okay coming in here and shoot at this location? So we did again, bunch of different locations. Um, but you know, the funny thing is, you know, like the kitchen was fairly, well, if you see there, she's sitting on, on the table and there's some kind of kitchen stuff. The kitchen wasn't as big and this table was so heavy. We, we couldn't move this, this, this table. So I was just like, you know what, we'll try to make this work. So in that case, I was like, okay, I'm going to use the windows as a background. We're going to blur it. And um, yeah, we're going we're gonna to make this uh, work. So that was the first shoot. Uh, the second one also is kind of interesting because this person, so again, this is another really kind of interesting story. The, 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 the guy, he owns a brewery, like a private brewery in, in Calgary. 
And this, the things what you see on the background, there's this like a big tanks where they just, I don't know, they do this whole process creating the beer. And um, again, they have this little place there where, you know, people do the tasting. Um, and um, yeah, so I was like, you know what? It's reflective. It's, it's kind of cool. So we, we, we use that as, as a background. Um, the one little thing which I want to mention here, this guy at that time, he was extremely sick. He had cancer. Um, they, they, the doctors, they said, I think they, they, you know, they didn't give him too much chances to kind of, you know, go through this. And um, yeah, we did the, this photo shoot. But the funny thing is, you know, I see the behind the scene, the photo, he's super excited and he was super positive, you know, despite his illness and how sick he was. Uh, we did this photo shoot. We got the, 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 the image and he wanted to have this at his place, you know, and again, it's a hidden story. So those images, you know, if you wouldn't see, as you said, the background, you probably wouldn't know. Uh, but uh, there's, as I said, I always say, you know, we have something there which people don't know what it is. It's just just only for the person who, you know, I'm taking the pictures of. They, they know the, the, the full story of this. Right. Your results look and appear and feel similar, which has yes. to do with consistency, with posing, with lighting. We will talk in a bit about that, obviously. Mm -hmm. And that's what is really most important about it. But each situation or each single photo, as far we have seen it, has always a really personal note and story to it. So is this the way you want to conduct yes. your business? Okay. Yes, oh, absolutely. There is no question about it. You know, and that's, I think what strike me with headshots. I think that was one of those things which really uh, pulled me into this industry that, you know, when I was shooting weddings, you were dealing with hundreds of people, right? You were going to the wedding and then you, you like, there's no, I would say, emotional connection with, um, with you know, the, 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 the clients, you know, like I had connection with the bride and groom, but there was chaos always, right? There was always chaos. There was always running around. There was always, you know, trying to make things work. And headshots were completely on the opposite side because you had to connect it with people, right? You had to kind of know them a little bit more. Um, you had to find, you know, kind of locations which would fit what they, you know, even again, this is, I'm just repeating myself, you know, even though it's all about them, but you giving them something more, just the headshots. Um, I had this story again, um, where I was shooting a guy who uh, he came, well, he, he was Muslim, right? And we use this projector idea where I projected one of those mosques where he, you know, I don't know, grew up and, and, and had so much meaning to him. And he started crying, like literally crying on the photo shoot because, you know, you couldn't see, it was funny because you couldn't see the mosque on the background he knew was there and he knew, you know, it's, it's, it's hidden and it, it this is, is part of this image. But he says like, you know, that's the best image I've got because I only know the story behind it. This is just for me. This is personal thing where, you know, a lot of people don't understand. And I also just give them a little bit of also kind of ability to share about an image, right? Oh, he used this background for, you know, this shoot. You don't know what it is, but I can tell you. And there's this, this story, right? Um, I had another story where, you know, like we took a photo. This, this is also crazy. Actually, the guy just passed away um, this last year. So we actually doing a photo shoot. We're doing his headshot. And he got a phone call on the photo shoot that his daughter gave the birth to his, his first, his grandchild. And we used a picture of her as a background. Um, so you can't see that it's her, but it's there. And, you know, that was just the kind of like the moment for him where, you know, like he got this phone call, you know, he found out about this, 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 this baby, which was just born seconds ago. And we used that picture of his daughter uh, for the background. And he's like, oh man, this picture has so much meaning for me because he not only remember, you know, the moment of what happened at that, at that time, but also had an image, which, which has this hidden message um, you know, kind of behind and then, and then was kind of, I don't know, meaningful for him. So yeah, I could just go on and on, like, because every, every image you pull out has some story, like they make, right. sometimes they're big, sometimes they're small, but uh, definitely, you know, going back to your question, 
um, I'm trying to make those photo shoots meaningful for these people. I'm trying to connect them. I'm trying trying to understand them, trying to know them a little bit more. And there's something associated with this, right? Okay. So it's really beautiful, but you're most definitely not the regular headshot, headshot. photography guy, right? Yeah, you know what? I hope so. But I think all those headshot <laughs> photographers, they also could say a little bit story about some of those images. You know, right. there's some good experiences. I also could share some bad ones, right? I had some of course where it was horrible. Right. But um, let's but again, talk we, about the good ones yeah, today. Yeah, absolutely. But that's what I'm saying. What I'm trying to say is um, every headshot session, I think for most headshot photographers, they could add a little bit of story here and there. There's no question about it. Of course, what you're describing with headshots is the genre, right? Mm -hmm. um, what you're in, you know, my point of view, what you're describing with the stories that led to the situation, to the location, to the, mm -hmm. the setup. Actually, it's kind of a portrait photography. It is. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. You know, headshots are kind of like part of portrait kind of the group right it's just of a little course. bit of a different version of, of, of because uh, but the, the headshots you know technically speaking we see or we convey headshots as something that's corporate and a bit you know yes. grayish background but the things you're doing i mean specifically i know it's marketing uh, you market mm -hmm. them as, as as headshots but a kind of the whole situation the whole package around actually it's kind of portraiture right it is. And and again, you know what? This is just what hit me right now. Maybe, maybe this whole thing also is kind of the leftovers from my wedding career, right? Because when it comes to weddings, they always tell you, oh, you have to create the wedding story. You know, the way you shoot, you have right. to create a story. And with that, they always say, oh, every picture, you know, supposed to have be some, should have some kind of story behind it. And maybe that's what I was trying to do. You know, I was trying to create a little bit of story with my headshots. Even this is just a headshot and it's just, you know, simple, I would say pretty like, well, simple and pretty straightforward image. But what I was trying to do over the years, I was trying to implement it, some story with those images. And that was the only way I could find to, to make this, to make this work. Okay. We talked about so many actually private insightful stories. Now let's go back on a bit on a, on the educational part. Let's talk about posing. I know posing is not really related to the location, but since I have discovered uh, the posts or mm -hmm. the behind the scenes, that was about uh, location, seeing the posing that's related to it. I was quite uh, surprised. So independent on which location you shoot, it really seems that you have two kind of refined go-to strategies uh, about posing. But mm -hmm. before we talk about this, it appears that those private clients' headshots you have um, are they mostly shot in their private homes and places? So when talking yes. about location? Absolutely. Okay. okay. So they don't they don't have any assistance for letting you into their homes or places. Yeah, we can, you know what, let's discuss this because that's something which I think is extremely interesting. Um mm. and 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 I think that's gonna give people a little bit of I would say different perspective on you know why even i'm shooting at the client's locations and why, why i don't have a studio because i guess for a lot of photographers out there is the kind of the dream come true like oh i have in my own studio right. and so there's two little things which i want to point it out first um whenever you know you shoot in a variety of different locations and you just don't know what to expect you're just going to place and like you have to make this work and that really pushes your kind of creativity. That's you really have to see things differently. You really have to make things work. The more you shoot in awkward locations and tough locations and tight and, and spacious and, you know, like things which you have to somehow figure something out to make this work. And I think that was one of the biggest lessons for me that, and, and I'm, I, I would have to say I'm really appreciated. I went through that path because that really helped me to understand lighting better, to be more creative, to, to, to do things where, you know, I could just make any location work. So that was the first thing. The second thing, you know, when it comes to shooting at clients location, I found that I had some corporate 
photo shoots where, you know, I was renting out a studio. So, you know, I rent out the place and, um, you know, the clients were coming in and we were shooting. And I found, especially for headshots, which also I think they're very personal and people have to open up to you. They have to somehow kind of connect with you. Most of their studios, they're big. They have lots of equipment. They have lots of lighting and, um, you know, they, they spacious. So people feel like, you know, they going on this freaking, sorry for my language, you know, kind of soccer field and everything is point out at, at them and they have to smile or they have to do all this stuff. It's very intimidating for them. And I remember so many sessions I had that, you know, the, like, the thing didn't work. Like I could see their stress. They terrify. They, 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 you could see through their eyes. They like, you know, this is not their environment. Um, and, you know, of course it takes a little bit of time. You can warm them up and you can get what you want, but it was just really intimidating experience for them. Right. Especially for people who never have done this before. It, it, it was terrifying. Right. Um, so when I started shooting at their locations, I found like, okay, you know what? They feel better because it's their environment. It's their home. They feel safe. Um, they, they really kind of, you know, they're in own place where, you know, they, they pretty much, um, have completely different way of, you know, like thinking and, um, yeah, like I, I, I could see right away the results are, you know, different, Right. Not to mention, you know, they can, they had access to their clothing. They had access to kind of their own, I would say, some kind of props or, you know, things they're, they, they feel comfortable with, right? Like, it's all about a comfort. And, um, yeah, that's why I actually, you know what, I, I, I've i realized this fairly quickly. And I'm just, you know what? It works. And then whenever I was explaining to them, you know, you can come into the studio or you can play, come to my place and um, we can shoot here. But, you know, we also can go to the studio, but I can tell you right away, if you're going to, if we're going to be shooting at your place, you're going to feel way better. So people are usually like, oh, you know, you can shoot here. You know, that's awesome. You're just coming in. Right. Um, and also like, you know, I'm shooting right now, a lot of my sessions at my home and the same thing, like I'm trying to make this look like a freaking home. I'm not making it look this like a studio. Right. Okay. Okay. So this all about, you know, I, I think different types of like, you know, if you, we're talking about some corporate stuff where, you know, you're right. working with some high end models or you're working with people who've done it a million times for them, it's another place, another studio. But for folks who, you know, it, it's something that it's new, you have to figure out the place where, you know, the, the, their comfort going to affect your pictures. Okay. Right. So, okay. so that's one was one of the reasons I was okay. pushing this but really hard. That's, that's absolutely a fantastic insight because um i mean there are like two point of views right so there's the industry point of view from mm -hmm. the the photographer's view and it always looks like okay you're not professional if you do not have a studio you know fixed environment That's right. with everything which is kind of an accurate point of view but <laughs> at the very end of the day you're conducting business and, and mm -hmm. the business is all about your client, right? And, yes. and <laughs> if it's about the client and it's actually a fantastic strat strategy for the client that he, f he or she feels more comfortable in their own location, even if mm -hmm. it's either is his home or can be the office, doesn't matter. That's the actual way to go. I mean, I've never looked at it this way because for mm -hmm. me as a portrait photographer, I do have, well, I had my portrait studio, but again, it mean, looking at all your stories and all the personal insights, it makes it so obvious that it connects and works better if you're in the place where the person would like to be than mm -hmm. the opposite going into a studio. And it's not a weakness as a photographer, right? It's actually a strength. Absolutely. And then again, at the end of the day, you're looking at the comfort of your client, right? right. So that's what it's, I think, the key right. point of, of right. you know, doing this. But everyone has own approach, right? So I, I know there are some studios where, you know, they do fantastic job and it's much more convenient for the client, for the photographer to have own place and people just, you know, coming in and coming out. Um, so, you know, for photographer is definitely challenge whenever they have to go to the location. Right. But again, you know, for right. me from coming from the wedding industry, 
wasn't big of a deal because you know with weddings i was just running all over the place right going right. to clients right. locations and then running to different different places so that's not big of a deal even though the city of city of calgary is fairly big so driving around also takes a lot of time and you know takes you know kind of sometimes more that we should you know there's no public transportation which you know you could take you always have mm. to have a car mm. not to mention but i want to mention one person actually a friend of mine he he took the same approach. He's a hatchet photographer in, in New York. And he, the funny thing is he used, you know, the subway to just go to the locations with his gear and then, you know, set it up quickly, take a shots and move on to the next place. So there's other photographers who do that and they, they, they know why they do that. Right. So that's something. Right. That right. If, if you're in this industry for quite a bit, you kind of have a little bit of better understanding how the, you know, psychology works for your clients. Right. Okay, so let's let's jump back into posing okay. from from the convenience from the location for the clients to the convenience about posing, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I I discovered a few um, kind of funny things. Okay, okay. so uh, okay, wrong wrong button. This one here. We were talking about posing. Even if there are private clients or, or corporate clients, so but there it seems to be at their places. So, what I have seen the first go to post setup for you is a lot of your clients are captured being seated for a session. So yes. What we see here, why? Um, so, so there's a couple of reasons. Um, so, before we jump into actual posing, I want to just say a couple of things. So, okay. we're going to just give all the secrets. Um, so, First of all, you know, I found that you have to make person engage with you. So if you did say put person in the front of the camera and you just tell them, hey, stand up and look at me, usually what happens, they're going to get really uncomfortable and they're going to be start kind of like, you know, pushing their arms forward. They're going to be stressed. You can see, you know, their stress through their body language. So I found that whenever they're sitting, they're a little bit more comfortable, right? They can, we can do a lot of, we can do the, exactly the same things with them when they're sitting um, while they're standing. So I found sitting always kind of gives the client, again, a little bit more comfort. So sometimes I mix it up, you know, if I see that the client kind of, you know, don't feel comfortable or, you know, they cannot really clear their mind. I kind of pushing back and forth, sitting, standing, sitting, standing, whatever. But most of the time I'm trying to make them sit because I found that it, it's going to be way more comfortable, especially when we're shooting headshots, you know, you don't see the legs. You don't really see, um, you know, what is happening, you know, lower down there. You just see, you know, the top. So that's why, you know, it doesn't really kind of matter if, if they're sitting or standing. Um, the next thing is I always ask my clients to, you know, push their body forward, right? Because I want to make them engage with, with the camera. Because if they're sitting straight and they just look at you, you know, they, they their mind kind of is, is, is going away. So whenever they have to lean forward towards the camera and, you know, they're sitting on the edge of the chair, like I'm not saying it makes them uncomfortable, but makes them focus on what they're doing. And that actually creates the attention and they have to think about their body. They have to think about what they're doing. And that's going to make them focus a little bit more on you and on the on, on the camera. So, so that's the kind of little, I don't want to say secret, but little thing which, you know, I I've learned over the years that the engagement with you is extremely important and you have to somehow create this environment and this kind of posing that's going to somehow, um, you know, push this a little bit. So that's, that's the reason when it comes to, you know, the sitting and, um, you know, pushing their body forward. Okay. But now, okay. I perfectly yeah. understand. So it's from the convenience to engaging to, yes to interacting right but absolutely <laughs> let's take let's take it up a notch because sure. what was really interesting um what i have seen obviously it was the behind the scenes of a model so this was a model shoot so this yeah. is not a client but again super interesting seeing the result on the left side and then behind the scenes and now but what this is all about is about her posture positioning posing mm -hmm. on the right side so on the behind the scenes so it seems in general that is this is your second go-to post setup in a way of 
standing and leaning forward. We will see mm -hmm. in a minute in, in, the, in the client shoots what this actually means. And for a model, this looks quite, you know, that's the job description, right? Um, let's see a few of the results here. So these are four mm -hmm. results, which are, which appear like the other ones we have seen. Mm -hmm. So we don't know what's, what's behind that, right? Um, but actually seeing on how they are posing, and mm -hmm. you told me these are actual clients because first, first of all, I thought this is, was kind of a workshop. So you know how to teach mm -hmm. people how to pose and how to shoot and, and stuff like that. It looks like uh, you're really encouraging your actual clients to do kind of such a acrobatic challenges too. I've never yes. seen this this with with any other photographer. So they use rather traditional posing, like we already talked about the the sitting poses mm -hmm. uh, with tricks and shoulders. How do your clients respond to this kind of request? Isn't this too much trouble for, um, for this kind of well, poses? Well, most of the clients, they listen, right? Because they want to look good and they just want to make the shot works, right? So they kind of okay. trust my kind of expertise on, you know, what they should do. Uh, this whole thing is not as um, challenging as, you know, I think most people would think. So the reason behind this, so let me kind of ex explain this, you know, why they do what they do. So first of all, you know, when they sit and they sit on the edge of the chair, they can really easy push their body forward, right? So that's that's kind of easy go. When they're standing, it's a little bit of a different story because if you're standing, you have your feet right beside each other and you lean forward, like you're going to just fall, fall forward, right? Like it's just uncomfortable. So what they do, they pretty much, you know, split up their legs and they get, they put the whole weight of their body on their front leg, which means that, you know, it's much easier for them to push their body forward, right? Um, so there's another thing what it does. So when they lean forward and they push their body forward, um, they also extend their neckline. So the neck looks much, much longer. So if someone has double chin or, you know, it's a little bit, I would say, overweight and they stay straight forward, the double chin just comes out. But when they lean forward, you know, automatically this whole thing is hidden. Right. And you really don't see that. So that's one of the reasons. Uh, the second reason uh, which I want to discuss and we talk a little bit about it, whenever they have to do a little bit of different things, makes them engage with the photo shoot. They think about what they're doing. They're not just standing there. They, they have something to focus on and they have something to do. Um, I know, you know, this might look a little bit uncomfortable. Like I'm not trying to push, you know, some let's say older folks who are like, I don't know. A little bit older and they overweight and all this stuff um, to do something like this to that exactly. extent. Exactly. But, that will you have, know, that... the moderation of this type of posing, I'm pushing on all my headshots, right? Um, okay. And it, it it works because, you know, they they more engaged, they think about a photo shoot, they focus on you, they also pay attention to you, what you're telling to them. Because if you tell someone, hey, you know, stand over there, I'm going to take photos. You know, they're going to be like, okay, like, what, like, what should I do? Like, how should I stand? How, how should I turn my body? This pose tells them exactly how to do things, right? And they have to focus on it and they have to think about what they're doing. And the funny thing is, and I hear this all the time. I know it might sound kind of crazy, but my clients are tired after the headshot session. Like they, they have to work for it. It's not like, you know, they're going to show up. They're going to stand. I'm going to snap some pictures and that's it. I, I make them work a little bit just, you know, to, just to kind of push certain lines on their body, create some specific body language and all this stuff. We could go really deep on this. But that's just the, the the basic premise of you know why I'm doing the way I'm, I'm I'm doing this, and it works. You know I've been doing this for a decade now, and um, yeah, it it gets it it makes me feel that you know people are way more engaged throughout a photo shoot, um, and and they really kind of pay attention to you know to you to the camera to whatever is happening around them. And this is another thing what I want to point it out is. One of the worst thing what I found when it comes to the headshot session is when your client, basically their mind goes away and they start thinking about some other crap, right? You know, about their life, about their job problems, about whatever the hell is going on in, in, their, in their life. So one of the things which I'm always really, what I'm trying to push is just to kind of keep their attention on the photo shoot. And, um, you know, if you are able to do that, 
then you know you're going to be way more successful with the images because you're going to see that attention or you're going to going to see that people are engaged with you um you know human body well human face i have i don't know like i have over 200 type of different muscles on their face and you can see if someone is looking at the camera and their mind is someone else you feel it like you look at the image like okay they're not there like you know they, right. they're looking at you but their mind but right. if you see at my images and this is one of the kind of key points what i'm trying that you know they look at you and the, you 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 feel like they really pay attention to you right so that's why what i think what i'm trying to do is to create not only the connection with my subject but also make them think about a photo shoot because that creates right. completely different face expressions right so it's engagement at the very yes, end it comes out to engagement let's talk about lighting i have seen or recognized that your lighting is always similar and almost every time it's tied mm -hmm. to on location work or the studio doesn't really matter it's kind of the mm -hmm. basic setup which is kind of a standard setup but still mm -hmm. it's elaborated it seems to be a three light setup we will see in a, in a second and of course, for us as a photographer, lighting is kind of the tool that we get what we want in a way of the result and the style or, or signature style. But lighting, obviously, in this way, because we were talking about, is also about that we don't disturb the client because we want to be engaged with the client, right? Because mm -hmm. the client really does not care too much about the lighting. If we see this setup, you told me this is actually for a client. So that's not a model. So this is a client setup. Mm -hmm. And we see here the kind of your to go to lighting, right? Yes. Which is a three, not three lights. Uh, yes. It's three lights, right? Plus, plus a reflector. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, quickly, ex really briefly explain what we see here so we can then have an idea what we will see on the next pictures for sure. The, so again, before we jump into this, I'm going to give a little bit of disclaimer just to make sure everyone is on the same page. Right. Um, I don't want to say, and I know like I, it's going to sound a little bit crazy, but um, lighting is just uh, the foundation of, you know, where you're going with the image. It gives you this, 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 this first layer of what you're trying to achieve. Right. Right. So saying that the lighting you know kind of creates all this stuff is it's it's my opinion it's nonsense it's it's just a part of the equation which we have to go through to get the final results and and i'll explain this you know in steps um okay so let's go back to the lighting and we're going to try to kind of explore this a little bit more so the way i like to work is you know i'm using three light setup um, because that gives me the full control of their ins entire image. So it's the main light, you know, which just kind of gives you the first kind of like, you know, beautiful lighting of, of the person. Um, you're trying to separate your subject from the background somehow. That's why I'm using the kicker light. And then to control the background, I'm using additional um, light for the background. So then I have full control of the lighting and on the, on the top of that, um, just to kind of create a little bit more softer shadows on, on the person, on the subject face, I'm using the reflector, which just kind of bounce off um, the light from the from the main light to just fill up um, you know, some of those harsher shadows on the person's face. And that's pretty much um, you know, my setup. Having said that, there's one little thing what I want to add to this. When it comes to the headshots, every person has different face features, right? You know, we have people who have, let's say, a little bit more chubby faces. There is some people who have, you know, I don't know, bigger noses. You know, we could go on and on. Everyone is different, right? Everyone has a different feature. And then we have to somehow look at those person and try to find the best lighting for them, right? So just because, you know, you see the lighting, um, it's, it's, it's just the one thing, but I also, I work with my lighting. What that means, that means that you move your light all over the place. You adjust the lighting, you, you go higher, you go lower, you're moving, you know, away, you get closer. Um, you, you lift the, 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 let's say the reflector higher, you work with, let's say your, your kicker light, you know, you try, you're trying to constantly try to find, uh, the perfect lighting for your subject. And that also takes time throughout a photo shoot. So usually what happens whenever I start shooting, the first 20 minutes, 
I'm trying to find what is best for the subject. And I never know. Like it's it's never it's not like a one recipe that we say, like, oh, if you put your light 1.5 meter away, you know, 45 degrees downwards on your subject, you always get the results. It's a, it's a BS, right? You have to find it the best angle. Um, sometimes, you know, lighting works this kind of the same setup works for one person. It's not gonna work at all for the other person. Um, another little example what I wanna 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 share is that also depends on which side of the lighting you have. If you're shooting Rembrandt lighting, you can have your main light on the right, on the left-hand side, right? Either or. And I remember it's like a little life kind of experience, which just taught me so much. I'm shooting this person. I have light on the right, like main light on the right-hand side. I'm just keep shooting, you know, changing the posing, changing, you know, the, the, the body language, trying to do everything and the things just don't work. You know, and I'm just like, what the hell is happening here? Like, I just just don't understand why I'm getting stuff and you see it and it just doesn't add up. And you know what? I was just like, okay, you know what? Why don't I switch the light? I'm, I, and, I, and what I've done, I put my main light on the left-hand side and then I just switch the kicker light. And all of a sudden, all the images are just like, holy shit, it's, it's working now. So every person <laughs> also have different sides of the face right so they say that the closer the right to the left is is you know that's the most apparently the most beautiful people are right but everyone has own side right so going back to the lighting it's just it's it's you have to learn how to work absolutely yes no absolutely and that's i mean we could do a 10-hour talk about lighting i just so now let's go to the next frame which Mm -hmm is about emphasizing the similarities of your three-point lighting, right? You know, the lighting is a one thing, but then also you have the, the retouching process, which right. also fix some of those deficiencies of, you know, what you're not able to get with the lighting, right? So that's what you see on those final images. It's I would say it's not really 100% of, I would say, what the lighting does to your subject, you know, there's things okay. which are altered. There are things which are fixed. There are some shadows which are softened. There is some face and skin discolorations removed from from the skin, and that's why the the light is not only the 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 light itself, but also the light is polished afterwards in 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 a post production. So I want to make this clear that you know the stuff what you're seeing, it's not. Um, exactly what the light did to your subject or, right. or to this particular image. And, and I want to make this clear because I always hear this like, oh my God, your lighting is so perfect. But again, it's a process. You know, the lighting is the first step. Then it's the editing process, which kind of all those deficiency from lighting, they're fixed, right? So I think what we could do another time or, you know, we could do, you know, I don't know, maybe another presentation and focus only on this, where we could show what the lighting have done to the subject, how the raw image look like, and what's happening when it's polished. And they, people could really see the big picture and could see the whole process. But going back to what you were asking about, about the lighting, yes, you know, the lighting when it comes to shooting headshots, I really like, there's two types of lighting we could, what I use. One is the Rembrandt lighting, which I really like because adds the dimension to the image. And there is more flat lighting, which is the clamshell lighting. And there's a two setups. And you know what? Basically, my lighting for my subject, it's pretty much all the time the same because I know what the look I'm going after. The one thing which kind of changes constantly and what, it, what we make this image is different and unique and, you know, it's the background. So that's, we talk a little bit about, you know, some of those stories. But with the background, you know, then you can, the, the, it's the ocean. Right. Because you can do <clears throat> endless things. You can use any location. You can use any background and you can really add a little bit of flavor to to your image. And that's when it kind of the creative part kind of comes into place. And that's so. exactly why I wanted to show this similar lighting situations. And thank you for the note about the post processing. Mm-hmm. Obviously, looking at the behind the scenes pictures in relation to all the different locations we have seen now today which is it all about which is your distinctive look which mixes then with the background and mm-hmm. that's big differentiated to other photographers that's the whole story about mm-hmm. the backgrounds absolutely yeah. and and again you know the, the the whole message which i would like to share with photographers you know don't feel 
limited that you know there is no places where you can shoot there is no right. interesting background there is you know you have to have a studio to get interesting images it, it's not true and I, and i'm trying to be kind of the proof of that right that you can you are. really you can really you know make work you know things that you know you probably wouldn't expect before and again it's, it's a learning process it takes time to figure things out but the more, again, the more you challenge yourself and then, you know, you try to make things work, they will start working eventually. I can guarantee you that. Right. So as a concluding question, you know, about this detour, about locations, what was the most extreme or unusual location you have ever shot for a commissioned client headshot? So not your private work. Extreme location. Well, unusual. unusual. We have seen the bridges. We, we, we have been outdoor today. We have been on these environmental portraits all uh, all over. We have been on the swimming deck, etc. Mm -hmm. Is there something missing here? There's something missing? <laughs> well, it's hard to pick one because I think all those locations pick were one. pick one. So For you. I'll share that I'll share that with story. Um, okay. which it's kind of interesting, but also gives people a little bit more, I would say also different perspective that also you have to be very careful when you're choosing the location. Right. Um, so I had this paid client um, and um, he was an architect and he really wanted to have, you know, some image which could kind of have some kind of like architecture on the background. So, you know, I started kind of driving around a downtown in Calgary because they have a lot of interesting, you know, buildings and places and kind of structures which we could use as a background. So, you know, stupid me, I didn't kind of like look deeper into how that works, shooting, shooting in places, kind of public places or, you know, places where they have buildings behind whatever. So we got to the location. I set up my stuff. We started shooting and all of a sudden there's like, you know, four different, you know, cop cars, you know, pulled over and, you know, they start kind of screaming and yelling at us that, you know, we don't have a permit and they're going to find us. You know, I have two seconds to pack the stuff. And, you know, we started like, oh, I got terrified because, you know, like they, they, they were really furious and I'm like, holy shit, like what now? And, you know, you have this paid client. He's established architect, and you know we all the, all, the, all these cops around yelling at us that you know we are allowed to shoot. And apparently, what happened, which is also kind of interesting, I had no idea about it. That uh, first of all, you have to sh have a permit to shoot on some kind of places, uh, and you have to have you know from the city, you have to have this whole paperwork done. Not to mention, you have to pay tons of money to get that. Plus, you have to have a permit of the building itself. You know, because they also have some rights to protect their, you know, kind of, you know, property, whatever. Um, also, what was fascinating, this whole thing happened after, you know, kind of September 11. So whenever they all see you taking photos of their buildings, you know, they allow to pretty much just arrest you, which also is, I think, crazy, crazy thing these days. Um, but you know, the whole story ended up like, you know, they, the, they let us go. They, they, we packed their stuff. Um, the funny thing, I got the shots. So we did, we worked fairly, um, quickly and I was able to pull off some stuff out of this. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, the, the whole situation with the police was a little bit terrifying. The client was scared and I felt like extremely embarrassed because, you know, I should be prepared for something like this and right. I should know better. Uh, but I was again, learning curve don't go to some locations which you're not sure about and then you know if you go there make sure you're you're fully prepared you know kind of from the permit side and then and then you know you cover that if someone shows up and starts screaming and yelling at you you you're <laughs> covered right so i hope that that's that's something interesting yeah but that was one of those stories which that's super interesting so the unusual location was actually again an unusual situation right so yes. we discovered a lot through the presentation well, yes. yeah, that's kind of concluding it. That's absolutely <laughs> perfect. <laughs> that's I hope really... that was interesting and, you know, give people some insight to my, my, my world and my work and they can absolutely. connect some dots for sure. Absolutely. Now, one last thing. I just want to change back to the presentation, please. And here we are. One last thing, last but not least. 
And the topic for another time is you are also shooting a lot of what you call creative headshots. Mm -hmm. So this really closes for me, actually, the circle about creativity from the quote we were citing in the very beginning. Uh, but I said, this is a talk for another time, but this beautifully plays into these private stories what we have had today. So I really thank you very much for joining today. And for all the insights, that's what we don't see on the final results, right? Absolutely. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, that was really, you know, interesting conversation. I've, you know, I, I was super excited for it. And, and I'm glad, you know, we could open up some interesting new doors and then, you know, explore some of those things. So, yeah, I really appreciate it. Thank you for your time and see you soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, folks. Bye.